Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again with another video on The Flash Season 3, and this is going to be my review for Episode 19, otherwise entitled The Once and Future Flash. Now, obviously, before I go ahead, there will be spoilers within, within this uh, review, so if you have not seen the episode, please go watch it because there is a decent amount to talk about, so yeah, go watch it before you watch this video. Now, just quickly, before we get into what I thought of the episode, one thing I have to quickly mention is, if you remember back about a week or two ago, I did some videos where I used some like leaked footage from the set of The Flash. I just need to uh, make a bit of a statement. I was using footage that did belong to a, another website and another company. So the website is called Celebrity Whatnot. I will leave it linked all in the description below and I will leave it linked on the screen as well. You should be able to click on each of the icons and it will take you to them. That's where that footage is from. That's where the footage belongs to. So essentially, if you want to see more footage and stuff in regards to all the, you know, filming from the set and stuff like that, you can either go to their YouTube channel and subscribe to it or you can just go to their website and you should be able to see the photos there. So obviously at the end of last episode, we saw basically the rebirth, if you want to call it, of Caitlin Snow into Killer Frost. And that's essentially where this episode picked up. I do like them when the episodes do this, where they, you know, leave on a cliffhanger and then they start off right at the end of the episode. And that's what they did in this episode with HR, Julian and Cisco running away from Killer Frost, which I thought was a nice little scene. Now, obviously, going into this episode, we knew that Barry was going to the future, and it was interesting the way that he figured out, okay, this is where I need to go, because he realized, okay, in that, you know, that, you know, that newspaper from the future in 2024, you know, I'm dealing with other people, I'm not versing reverse, uh, versing Sabaton, might I say, so I must have dealt with him by then. Because I think that was one question that a lot of people were trying to, like, answer, was like, well, why is he randomly going to 2024? Is he going to you know, just test, you know, just pop out there randomly or go to different time periods and then figure out 2024 is where he needs to be. So they, I think they decently explained that. I actually did really enjoy the future versions of Top and Mirror Master in this episode. We see them twice, one at the beginning and once towards the end. Now, one thing I did mention going into these episode, or this episode, might I say, was that these two villains of Top and Mirror Master are going to be more experienced with their powers, and Barry's going to find it very, very difficult to deal with them. And I got caught an idiot by people saying, oh, Paige, that makes no sense. Well, look, it's exactly what happened. So, yeah, Barry sort of got messed up there. Also, Mirror Master sort of says something where he's like, I'm going to put you in a place you can't get out of. Was he sort of referencing the mirror world there? I think he was. One thing we did see in the trailer was Barry visiting the old apartment, which I thought we might have seen a bit of a longer sequence there. Like, we might have seen things that, like, hinted at certain things that would happen maybe in the rest of the season or, you know, after Iris was to, you know, die. But we didn't really see anything, so I thought that was a bit disappointing. But this is where, like, future Cisco comes into it because he's able to hack into certain things and see that Barry's here. Seeing Star Labs the way it was was a bit weird and a bit unsettling because we're used to seeing it in a completely different manner. But obviously it had to be that way because it fit into what Barry was like because, you know, Barry stayed in Star Labs after Iris died. He became very secluded, very, uh, you know, separate from everyone. And I guess Star Labs just matched what Barry was feeling and acting at that time. We'd obviously seen Emo or Future Barry in the uh, all the uh, the trailers and promos and stuff for the episode. But you can even tell, like, Grant Gustin, like, put on a bit of a, a deeper voice when he was uh, speaking as Future Barry, which I thought was pretty cool. One thing I was not expecting to see in this episode, though, was when we find out that when Killer Frost and Cisco or Vibe battle, Killer Frost freezes off Cisco's hands. I thought he might have, she might have, like, froze off just one of his hands and stuff. Well, it was basically his forearm, really, in his hands. So that was pretty insane. I was like, what the hell is going on here? So he has, like, cybernetic hands and stuff like that. That was crazy. I did like the uh, the mission to uh, meet all the future versions of Team Flash. So he started off meeting future Julian and he's working at Iron Heights. And obviously he's working there because Killer Frost is in Iron Heights. And that's when we actually learn that, Ki uh, that Killer Frost teamed up with Savitar. So she knows who he is. So this is going to be an in interesting thing going ahead, especially with something we see at the end of the episode, which we'll talk about in a second. But this is going to be very interesting going ahead. And if you've read some of the synopsises or descriptions for future episodes, I think you can now get an idea of what the Killer Frost inclusion of the end part of this season will be. Maybe not, we might not know all of it, but we have a general idea of what her role is going to be in the last couple of episodes. Now, it was really weird meeting future Wally because he was completely messed up. So we learned that like after Iris died, Wally got really angry, which I think a lot of us thought he might 
uh, go down that path if Iris was to die. Like, he'd just be built up with all this rage, especially with what we've seen with Wally since we've met him. He can be like that sometimes. But Savitar messed him up, smashed his spine, and just, you know, messed him up completely. And I don't think we'll ever see that. Like, I, don't, obvi- I think it's obviously we'll, obvious we'll never see it, sorry, but... It's just crazy because Wally was the only one there with Savitar. So no one really knows what Savitar, uh, Savitar did to him completely because Wally went off, fought him, got smashed up, and then Joe found And We don't know what that middle part is when he was actually fighting Savitar. And speaking of Joe, we actually meet future Joe and he's just, you know, messed up completely. Basically, everyone in this uh, episode was completely messed up. And apart from maybe Cisco, he was the only one that was really showing any signs of positivity and stuff like that. But we learned that Barry actually bailed on him, and earlier in the episode, Barry made that promise to Iris that he would be there for Joe if she was to, you know, go. And, you know, Barry didn't keep that promise. Well, I might have lied then. Maybe not everyone was completely messed up in regards to Future Team Flash, because we did meet future H.R. Wells, who was an author, and he owns Jitters now. Changed the name to H.R. Jitters. When that popped up, I was just like, wow, like, really? Like, what the hell? What the hell, H.R.? And it turns out HR is quite the uh, the ladies' man, so I guess things are everything's coming up HR. Now, meeting all those future versions of Team Flash was great, but when we get them reunited, that was pretty cool when we see Barry go and take on Top and Mirror Master again because, you know, he just wants to make the future a bit of a brighter place even if he's, you know, going to go back and probably change this future anyway. But as you would have seen earlier in the episode, Barry sort of gets messed up by Top and Mirror Master again, but... That had to happen so we can get some uh, some future Flash to rock up and come to the rescue. And I must say, I love that suit. It's just a, a bit of a brighter red. Got the cool little details and stuff on there, even on the head, on the boots and stuff like that. It was just awesome. And, like, I really want to see this suit. Like, I'm just wondering, are we going to see it again this season? It might be next season's suit. Maybe Barry's like, you know what, we need a bit of a... Bit of an improvement on this suit. I'm not liking it that much because they made that future suit. It's just not going to lie around for three or four more years if, you know, Flash gets to season seven and they randomly get that suit. I think it's going to be next season's suit for sure. But Tracy Brand gets name dropped. Now, if you've been watching my videos in the past couple of, or the past week, might I say, you would probably have heard me say Tracy Brand a couple of times. So that's really going to be the, fo- well, maybe not a focus, but definitely a part of next week's episode. So, yeah, that's going to continue on for the rest of the season. She's going to be involved. But really, when they're talking about that, it gets revealed that Savitar wasn't stopped until around 2021 because Barry didn't meet her and she didn't work at that stuff until four years after Iris died. So that would make it 2021, maybe 2022 when Savitar was finally defeated. So he was running around for still a decent amount of time after that. But speaking of Savitar... That end credit scene just made me go, oh god, what's happening here when we see Killer Frost meeting Savitar in the woods? It's all cold, it's all snowy, and, you know, Savitar's gonna make Killer Frost stay Killer Frost, remove that Caitlyn part of her. So there is still some Caitlyn in there, even though I thought maybe Caitlyn would have died completely and it's just full on Killer Frost now, but that's where Savitar comes into it. So he's gonna, you know, promise to make Killer Frost uh, permanent and no more Caitlyn. And to, uh, to sort of keep it, a bit of a, you know, close promise, if you want to call it that, Savitar reveals himself to Killer Frost. Now, you do see his hair, and you do see his body shape. Now, I'll probably talk about this in a video of the weekend, because I think it's going to take more time to go in-depth with it. But I have some ideas on who it could be, and it's going to be very weird if they do it this way. But, uh, yeah, but you saw Caitlyn's or Killer Frost's um, reaction to it, so it's almost as if she knows the person that's under there. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that all plays out. And uh, it, I'm pretty excited. But overall, I can't really find anything wrong with this episode. I guess one thing is that I thought we might have spent a tiny bit more time in the present because I thought they were going to do more stuff with Killer Frost. But obviously they're doing that next week. So this episode was basically all in the future, which I really, really enjoyed. This is probably one of the most fun episodes I've had with The Flash, and it's weird saying that because there was a lot of, like, down and dreary and dark moments, but that means you can't have fun with it. it does, like, that doesn't mean you can't have fun with the episode. There was still a lot of just fun moments in the episode. I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain why I'm calling it fun. It was just enjoyable. That's probably the best word to go with. 
But thanks for watching, guys. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like on it. Let me know in the comments section down below. What did you think of this episode? Did you like it as much as I did? Maybe it's just because Flash, Flash has been gone for so long. It's finally back. Maybe I'm overhyping it, but I really, really enjoy this episode. It's one of the most enjoyable episodes I've watched this season. But yeah, let me know what you think of it all in the comments section down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you later, guys. Goodbye.